Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. So here's a rant. You have HDR, which is high dynamic range. It's his latest rage in photography. And what it is, I should explain it first, is uh, you take multiple shots, usually on a, well, most likely on a tripod, shots at different exposures. You bracket your exposures. And for those of you who don't know what bracketing is, say you get your perfectly exposed picture as what the camera says. Do one stop over or a half a stop, then one stop, then one and a half, then two stops over, and then do it under the same way. And by doing that, you have a couple, swallowed another bug, more protein, awesome. Um, so by doing that, you can then have it put together in programs like Photoshop that will create a high dynamic range image, which are all, there's samples down here below showing you what they are. Now my feeling on HDR, I thought it was terrible. I thought I was just going to rip on it and tell you that it's the worst thing in the world. But I did my research because I had to do my research. And what I found is that the HDR goes back to 1850 when a maritime photographer was photographing he wanted to get the sky and he wanted to get the ocean all in a nice exposure. So he took two shots, one of the sky, one of the, uh, one of the water, put them together when he was printing, and there he had a high dynamic range image because he had two exposures at different exposures and um, put it together and got a cool picture. Moving into the 40s, guys developed it for uh, shooting nuclear bomb explosions, the nuclear blasts, the tests to see what it would look like and they created these images that Time Magazine ran. So in my research, I found that, you know, Gizmodo did last week, or whenever this is, a uh, submit your HDR images. And there's a lot of terrible HDR images, and that's what threw me off. But then there's those awesome images that you come, around, uh, come across that you go, holy shit, this is awesome. Awesome, right? Awesome. So anyway, what makes it awesome? Say it's a nightscape. Uh, night photography of Tokyo. I've seen some ones that just will blow your mind. The colors, the, it looks like it's a science fiction photo, but it's really awesome because it's done really well. I think nighttime HDR works much better than daytime HDR. Uh, I, I, I don't like when the sky looks nice and exposed and the, everything else looks nice and exposed. That's me. I don't like it. I think it looks too freaky. My brain doesn't process it right. Um, but I saw one example done in a warehouse that just looked incredible. Everything, you know, it looked like it was marble floor. It just looked like a thick photo. I really want to know how to do that. I want to learn more about it. So I thought I was going to rip the shit out of HDR. I'm only going to rip the shit out of the terrible HDR, which that comes because anybody can shoot it, because anybody with a digital camera can do this and a tripod. But when it's done well, it's awesome. So there you go. It's It can be really awesome. So usually the fro knows. I know a lot. But this is something that the fro doesn't know. I don't know HDR. So I want to find somebody uh, for you guys to take a look at, maybe have them do a guest post on this site about HDR so we both can learn about it. So I can learn more about HDR. You can learn more about HDR because there have to be experts out there. And I'm just not one of them. So like I said, the fro usually knows, but not in this case. So. You know, that's about it, and um, so that's it. The rant says that I don't think HDR is total crap. I want to do a little more research and find out how to do it better, and we'll all, we'll all get better at it together. Until next time, Fro knows photo. Fro doesn't know HDR. Later.